Welcome, Shane. Oh, don't forget this part. We'll talk about all that. Hey, welcome back, Guitar at Work. Shane here with you. And uh, this is uh, Neil Young's Harvest Moon. Always a ton of requests for this one, so thanks for that. Uh, really, really a fun song to play. Iconic riff. It's uh, definitely a top five campfire classic for sure. We'll talk about all the different parts and everything that you're going to need um, to play along. And again, thanks for coming back. Your thumbs up have met the world here, and I uh, really, really appreciate that. A lot of great comments and questions and suggestions, so thanks again for that. Let's dig right in. I'll be referring to sheets um, the entire time. I've got one, two, three sheets here for you. One has the actual song on it with the chords and all that good stuff. If you head to patreon.com slash guitar at work, there are three. Two of them have details, and one of them's got the actual song on it. So go grab patreon.com slash guitar at work. And now that doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. There's a whole bunch of songs in there. Just go and grab them. And then uh, you can play along to a whole bunch of videos and uh, and learn uh, from the sheets. Same sheets that I'm using. I have it here on my trusty iPad. Them here on my trusty iPad. Um, we're in drop D tuning. Uh, now before, don't hang up on me just yet. It's it's your most popular altered tuning. You definitely need to know how to do it. We're only changing one string. It is not that difficult. It's really not difficult at all. I'm going to go back to standard tuning here for a second. <laughs> Yeah. There's standard tuning. Um, all you have to do, it's easy as pipe. Do it with me here. I'm going to play my low E. I'm going to bring that down to a D. Now, how do I know what a D sounds like? Well, I'm going to play my open D string. I'm going to let that rattle around in my skull for a sec. And then. Aha. And remember, this is a high D, the D string, third thickest string. And this is now a low D. There we go. Go back up. Stay there. Okay, so if you play this note, there's your open D, open E, your open D, and down we go. There you go. There you go. Now there's no shame in using a tuner clip on type whatever tone you have realize that when you do tune down and there's a million songs that use this particular tuning because when we're in the key of D like this song it gives you that thunderous bottom a big bass yeah. it means on your D chord you don't have to worry about hitting your low E you can you want to hit it just give you that thunderous bottom so you could pop your tuner on there and just check out and make sure you're, you're in the right tuning there we go and I'll warn you it wants to creep up a little bit it wants to creep back sharp again so I usually just give it a little tug like that there we go. Easy as that. So if you need to stop tape or, or rerun that, rerun it. But it's a very, really, really important skill to be able to go down to drop D. That's it for that. So I'll start with the uh, the main riff, and we'll be playing along to the fabulous Beat Buddy from Singular Sound. I love this device, and uh, we'll talk about. Let's talk about the harmonics. This thing here. Let's do that uh, toward the end. People get so bogged down in that they never learn the song. So that's just. It's very difficult for one player to play that and keep on strumming. Okay. So uh, let's do that toward the end. So we get the song down first, and then at the very end, let's talk about how you might employ some lead stuff during the instrumental if you're jamming with somebody else. Just a little scale thing at the end that we've been doing that lately, and people seem to agree with it. So that's good. Also, I'll put that in the looper. We'll talk about looping and all that. Looping is a valuable skill. But we'll be playing to the singular sound beat buddy today, which is just fantastic. The cool thing is, if you go to um, if you go to their, their website, singular sound website, and there's a song matching tool. If you go to the beat buddy menu, uh, which is up top there, beat buddy menu, and then down you go to the song matching tool. And I typed in Harvest Moon, and sure enough, there it come it came up. Now it's premium content, which means it's an add-on. You just you, you you can download it. Uh, you download, and there's a whole bunch of different artists. There's a whole folder for Neil Young, and there's a whole bunch of his songs in there with the exact drum patterns. It's crazy. It's really 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 cool. So that's what we'll be using here today, and uh, I really really love it. I encourage you to do that for sure. And uh, all that if you there's there are links in the description and all that, and you can uh, if you use a promo code GAW10, you get 10% off and help the support the channel. Much appreciate that. But let's jump right in here. We have got you've got your sheets handy. I'm looking at the, the detail sheet here. The detail sheet, the main riff, got it here. The main riff. Uh, I'm going to be way up here. Check this out. You see a chord diagram. Watch out for the Roman numeral beside that chord diagram. Roman numeral nine means that that's the ninth fret on the guitar. The ninth fret. The first fret in the diagram is the ninth fret. So then we need a, a ring finger here on the eleventh fret of the G, and we need a middle finger here on the tenth fret of the B. That's your first shape. That's called D sus two. 
make sure you've got that happening. Watch, there is a blank, make, the ninth fret is open, right? So there's, there's nothing going on there on that chord diagram for that. There we go, that's your first shape. You will see people finger this differently. Uh, some people use your first and second. Some people use your second and third. Like it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's all good, it's all good. This, doing it this way means you don't have to move once you're on uh, to complete the idea. So let's just hear that. Yeah. And you'll see open circles indicating that the, all the open strings are available there. Beautiful sounding chord. Good, that's D sus too. And now all you have to do to that guy for the D69, I'm gonna add my pinky to the 12th fret of the B string. I end up with two fingers on the same string, but that's okay. He's not bugging anybody, that middle finger. So there we go, pinky's on. I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. Here's your D sus two. Add a pinky for the D six nine. There you go. And now to finish it, here's your D major seven. Gonna get rid of that pinky. And there's the ninth fret of that high E. There we go. So three shapes. Let's talk about the rhythm in just a sec. Let's just work on those three shapes. D sus two. D six nine, add that pinky and then D major seven. Good. Uh, great, now how do you, you, you need to do that a few times, right, to get it under your belt for sure, before you even start thinking about the rhythm. Remember, if the left hand is faltering at all, the right hand doesn't know what to do. And that's when people say, ah, eh, my rhythm isn't great, things like that. I hate to hear that because usually there's some sort of problem in the left hand and this guy doesn't know what to do. But if this guy's fluid, left hand, then your right hand's gonna follow suit. It's gonna be just fine. Um, so you may wanna stop tape there and just practice going back and forth on those shapes. You're going to see underneath those chord diagrams, you're gonna see the strumming pattern written. So the first one is this, it says bass down. So I'm on the D, uh, D sus two, the first shape. I'm gonna go bass, which, in, which means your lowest available bass note, which is the low E string, which is now a D, I should say. That guy there. You play him all alone, then a down stroke. Well, so far we have this bass, down. Now I'm going to add the pinky for the D6-9 and go down, up, down, up. Okay, so from the top we got this pinky off, bass, down, pinky on, down, up, down, up. Now D major seven, gonna get rid of the pinky. First finger's going on there, and bass. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. There it is. Now you may have to do this in what we call step time, where you're staring at the sheet and it won't feel musical. Like um, when you're dissecting it sort of at the molecular level, people always say, well, I don't hear the song in there. It takes a little bit of continuity, a little bit of speed, just to, ah, there you go, there it is, I hear it. But when you're involved in every stroke, uh, you wonder, you can't see the forest for the trees, basically, or can't hear the forest for the trees. Let me do that a couple of times slowly in real time, very slowly. Here's a, here's a main riff, riff number one, I'm calling that. Three, four, bass. Down, pinky on, down, up, down, up, bass, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Let's do it from the top again. Three, four, D sus two, bass, down, six, nine, down, up, down, up, major seven, bass, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Let me do a couple in a row without pausing. Here's a top, three, four, and a bass. Repeat now, bass, bass, good, so I'll call that riff number one, it's kind of the main riff in the song. There's two riffs in the song and I've labeled them riff number one and riff number two, we'll do them all uh, here in a sec. Uh, do both of those. That's, that's riff number one, that's your intro, but it also occurs later on in the song, so you want to get that one down for sure. Um, so you may have to stop tape there, no shame in that, and uh, that's a good way to go. Um, I'm going to go to the, I'll go to riff number two right now. Riff number two, um, he starts out with, uh, and before that, sorry, E minor. This E minor, but look at your E minor. The E minor, when he starts singing, we do that main riff uh, four times, then he's in with the vocal, so, and it's E minor, E minor. Now, remember, we're going to drop D tuning, so the, the shape's going to be a little bit different here. I'm going to, it almost looks like an A shape. I'm going to play the second fret of the low E, second fret of the A, and the second fret of the D. That's your E minor. So we're in the first, we're he's just about to start singing. Here's your verse, so he's going E minor, straight down, up stuff. That's right. Come a little bit. Right, straight down, up. Here's riff number two. Sorry if I'm bouncing around a little bit there. That was your E minor. That's the easy part, obviously, right? Here's riff number two, and that is going to be it. The rest of it's a piece of cake. So here's your D. I'm going to do this. Right, so I'm going to go bass, down, up, down, up. It says pause. Yep. 
Now D again, stay on the D, do an upstroke. D major seven, just gonna borrow that. A slash D, just gonna move that first finger over a little bit. And then a fancy D, I'll call it. There we go. Now, that's a, that's a mouthful. I know, let's go a couple of times here. Riff number two. Bass, down, up, down, up, pause, and then D again, up, D major seven, up, A slash D, up, and then fancy D. Yeah, so you're gonna have to get those shapes. Notice there's not a whole lot of movement there, right? It's all pretty economical. Let me do that a couple of times. Here's riff number two. Three, four, bass. D again. One more time. Riff number two. Three, four. That's it. You may have to be really, really deliberate about it. Just sit there, trying it, trying it, trying it. Now the good news is, you can just sit on D. If you just want to play the song, you can just sit on D throughout that whole thing there, riff number two, sit on D uh, while you're working on it. Then at least we'll do a play along, of course, as we always do a slow version and a, and a, and a, and a actual concert speed version. Um, you could just sit on D while you're working on that riff number two, right? So you could just do that while you're pecking away on it if you just want to play like a campfire version of that. It's always a possibility. Uh, you don't always have to do every single little idea in the song. Um, so let me put that in context for you. He's going to do four uh, main riffs, four, four riff number one. Let me do that for you. Three, four, four of these. Two. Three. Four. Now here's your E minor. First verse. Riff number two, here it is. Again. Back to the E minor. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So that is, if you have that, you pretty much have the song. There's a couple other chords in there, but they're dead easy compared to that. So again, stop tape there and peck away at it and rewind whatever you need to do. Um, the rest you're gonna run into, we're going to see that's number one and number two. Uh, there's a G6. I'm looking at the middle of the of the verses. There's a G6. You know that E minor that you were playing? Just drag that up to the fifth fret. Now this E minor, remember, it's a different shape than you're used to in normal tuning, right? But drag that up to the fifth fret. That's a G6. There we go. And that's where you're singing now. Uh, but there's a full moon rising. So G. But there's a full moon rising. Let's go dancing. Now riff number one coming in. In the line. Last line of the verse, he goes back to the G6. We know where the music's playing, etc. Then riff number uh, number one again, and you do it twice, it'll say times two. Says it on your sheet, riff number one, riff number two, because we won't want to write out D6, or D9, D9 to D6, nine, blah, 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 just, it's too complicated. Um, in your in your chorus, and this is the last bit, in your chorus, A7 sus4, there's the shape there, you'll see it on your detail sheet, on the bottom, A7 sus4, and he's going, because I'm still in love. Now A7, just take that pinky off, ring fingers going there to a regular A7. I wanna see you dancing. Back to A7 sus again. Still in A7 with you. On this harvest and riff number one. There we go. That's the song, that is it. So obviously the work is in riff number one and riff number two, right, for sure. Again, riff to me, riff number two is optional. You can just sit on the D while you're getting to know it. Riff number one is, is signature to the song. It's the intro, it's what everybody recognizes immediately, right? So you probably want that one in there. Um, hey, so let's go to a, to a, believe it or not, let's go to a slow play along. It comes in at 113 beats per minute, 113. I'll bring it down to 93. I'll take 20 points off of there, 93 beats a minute. And that's easy to do on the beat buddy. Just turn that knob to 93. And uh, again, I'm using the exact patterns that comes in the premium library for the beat buddy. And uh, you just pop, pop it in the, on the card and away you go. Really, really easy to do. Um, let's, uh, I'll just get her going here. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three. 
So I'm gonna play it up to the end of the first chorus, the slow version, just to give us a fighting chance, eh? Okay, so it comes to one, two, three, four, and one. Three more. It's riff number one. Verse, E minor. Come a little bit closer. Hear what I have. Riff number two. E minor again, second line. It's like children sleeping. You could dream this night. Riff number two again. Twice. G6, go. There's a full moon rising. One. One more. One, two. Riff number one. In the light. Twice. line of the verse, G6. We know where the music's playing. There's four G6s. Three. There's four. Riff number one twice. Here we go. Chorus. A7 sus four. Go. Still in love. A7. With you. Seven sus dance again. Still A7 with you. Riff number one, four times go now. There's two. There's three. Four. Okay, so consider that to be a slow play along. That was up to the end of the first chorus. And uh, I'll bring it back down to 113 beats per minute, so I don't forget 113 is concert speed. Now, so you'd want to be able to do what we just did in order before you leap into the uh, the full a uh, full speed play along, right? It's, a, it's considerably faster than that, 20, 20 beats a minute. Um, now the idea of play alongs, I say it every time, you know, it's, about, it's about recovery skills. So bad things happen to good people when you're playing in real time. You might, oh, where am I? I don't know where, oh, I lost my place. You gotta be able to do something when you're playing with other people. So maybe meet me back on an E minor, like when I get back to the E minor, wait for me there, or whatever you have to do to keep on going, staring at your sheet, whatever you need to do. Um, so the full speed play along, then let's get to those harmonics and then let's get a little bit of lead stuff as well. So I'm going to pop the beat buddy on here at full speed and ready to go. Here we go. Main riff four times. Riff number one. One, two, three, go. There we go. Two more. Come a little bit closer. Hear what I have. Riff number two. Again. E minor. Just like children sleeping. We could dream. Riff number two again. Twice. G6 coming. G6. There's a full moon rising. Let's go dancing. Riff number one. Here we go. Twice. Good. Last line of the verse. G6. We know where the music's playing. Stay there. Let's go out. Riff number one twice. Feel the night. Again. Chorus, A7 sus, go. Still in love, A7 with you. Wanna see you, A7 sus, dance again. 
still in love. A7 with you. Riff number one, four times go. Miss me. Here's two. Here's three. And four. Next verse coming. E minor. When we were strangers, I watched you. Riff number two. Here we go. Afar. E minor. E minor, yep. When we were lovers, loved you. Number two again. Riff number two. G6 coming. Here we go, G6. Getting late. Riff number one coming is climbing high. Twice. G6 now, G6. I want to celebrate. See it shining. Riff number one twice in your eye. Second chorus coming. A7, Sasko. Still in love. A7 is here. I want to see you. A7, Sas dance again. Still in love. A7 with you. Riff number one. Four times. Do it. Here we go. A one. Second one. Third one. Instrumental section, G6, G6, harmonica stuff, right? Two, there's three, there's four, riff number two, twice. G6, four of them. Riff number one, twice. Da, 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 da. Again. Now A7 sus chorus, bottom of the page now. Still in love, A7 with you. I want to see you dance, A7 sus again. Still in love, A7 with you. Riff number one, four times go. Great. Now that was a full speed play along. That's the entire song. And uh, hopefully you did okay with that. Go back, play it over and over and over again. And remember, uh, it's all about recovery. So maybe if you make one little mistake, don't start again. Try to get to the end of the song and pick it up wherever you can, whenever you can kind of thing. So excellent, guys. Um, just make sure that's all recording. It is good. Now, let's talk about harmonics. For those of you that want to get into this cool thing here, uh um, and I don't do it at the beginning of the video simply because people get so bogged down that they don't learn the song, as I said. So um, you, you'll find uh, on the 12th, actually 12, 7, and 5 on the guitar, uh, you get these neat little chime sounds called harmonics. And you have to be right over the silver fret bar. The 12th fret typically has a double dot on most guitars. I'm going to go right over that silver fret bar, the one forward, I mean toward the body of the guitar. Ah, and all you're doing, you don't put any pressure. Just barely touch, barely touch the string, a skinny string in this case, the high E string. And you get that beautiful little chime. You might get this at first. You just have to get out of your own way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pluck it ever so gently, and then get out of the way. So, bing. There we go. Same thing. Down one string, one thicker, and down one again. Yet again. So four strings in a row. Notice I'm not using a fingertip. You don't want to be too specific. It's too easy to miss. So I'm just literally slopping over my middle finger. And as I hit each string, I'm kind of getting out of the way ever so gently. You have to be right above the silver thing. You can't be in the middle where you normally put your finger. You won't get that sound. So right over the silver part, which is the fret. Oop, this way. So there's four in a row on the 12th fret. 
And then you go to the seventh fret of the A string, which is your second thickest. S seventh fret of the A string. So you get this. There we go, in time. Oop. There we go. Uh, it's worth, it, it is worth chasing for sure. It's kind of neat to be able to put that in. But remember, if you're one guitar player, you're coming from this thing. And you gotta go. And all the bottom falls out because there's no more strumming. So we've lost that. But if somebody continues to strum, it sounds great. It sounds great over top. But uh, I don't think as one guitar player, I would throw those in. Just thought you'd probably want to know how to do that. And away you go. Now, what I'm going to do for the lead stuff, you have a sheet that has a scale on it. This guy right here, um, a picture of the D pentatonic major scale. It's kind of cool. During the instrumental section, you don't have to play what he played on the harmonica, but it's kind of neat to be able to play something for sure. And even just noodling in a scale can, can actually sound pretty musical, especially pentatonic stuff. On the, I'm going to put in a little loop here. I'll loop the... Um, I'll loop the instrumental so I can just get a, a fresh song program here. There we go. And all I have to, the great thing about this, this is the Aero Slooper again by Singular Sound. Highly recommend it. The, the visual on this, the, uh, the, the graphic display is fantastic. It's really hard to mess up on this thing. It's, you see where the loop is, where it begins again, where you are within it. It's really cool that way for sure. It's also connected to the Beat Buddy, same company, so you literally just plug the Beat Buddy in. You don't have to have both devices, they, all, they both work independently and they're both fabulous. If you do have them, you just plug your Beat Buddy into the Aero Slooper and uh, it, will, it will actually, can, the Beat Buddy will control the looper. So uh, again, links are in the description, use that promo code, all that good stuff. I am just going to, I'm going to loop the instrumental section, which as you see there, starts on a G6. And I'll just, I'll loop the, uh, the, first, the first line of it there. So it's going to give me a four count when I press go on the Beat Buddy. One, two, three, go. Two. There's three. Four. Riff number two here. Again. There we go. Look, Ma, no heads. The scale is this. I'm gonna go to the, the fifth fret, and I'm gonna go up to the seventh, the same finger. I'll do it slowly in a sec. Little ideas like that. Really fun. Let's go slowly. I'll start that up. In, I'll start that up in a sec again um, to get you through the actual scale. So here's your fifth fret. You're seeing a picture of there. That's your D note. You'll see a little one written beside that. That's the fifth fret of the A string. A little one means to use your first finger there. Then we take that same finger and we're we're doing it differently than you normally would because we're in drop D tuning there. So again, fifth fret, first finger, seventh fret, first finger, and then a ring finger is going to the ninth fret, and then next string, seventh fret same string there that's your ninth fret seventh fret on the G ninth fret on the G seven on the B ten on the B seven on the high E and ten on the high E as well so let's go top again slowly D E F sharp A B D E F sharp A B D. Now you definitely have to stop tape. If that's new to you, don't expect to just do it, you know, do it in real time with the video. That's pretty tricky to do. So stop tape, look at your diagram. Hey, so that entire scale. Backwards. That's it. Now how would that sound over top of our loop? I'll start up. Just, 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 slowly. One more time, two, three, four. So that's just the scale, literally up and down the scale. Um, then you start maybe repeat a couple of notes, pause here and there, I'll go backwards.
Um, some notes will sound at rest, some notes will not. But that will change depending on what's going on in the loop, right? So the secret is keep moving. It's when you stop, you better be on a good note. So just keep on moving, make all the right faces. Yeah. Moving along, so that's um, it's a lot of fun to do, and also uh, I think any instrumentalist um, should play some scales. It, it it gives you independence in your fingers as well as uh, being very very musical. And the great thing about guitar is you can reuse that scale in different keys. It just moves around. It's the same shape, just like a bar chord. You just move it around and play it in different places. So very 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 fun for sure. Um, hey, that's it for this song. Thank you for this, and uh, again, thumbs up have meant a great deal. Thank you to Singular Sound and the Beat Buddy and uh, Aerosmith Looper, and uh, they're just fabulous. So I'm, I'll remind you if you use the promo code GAW10, you'll get ten percent off and help to support the channel. They're fabulous devices. To me, looping is your number one practice tool. The the, the Beat Buddy drum machine pedal is really like it. It's like a metronome on steroids. It's just fantastic. It's way more fun than a metronome, and you're gonna you're gonna feel your rhythm get better and better and better because you're learning how to play to it, something external like a drummer or a metronome. And and um, when people don't play with other people a lot, uh, you're going to find that your rhythm kind of kind of ebbs and flows. We don't want that. Yeah, so the, the beat buddy will police you in that. It's a lot of fun. So enjoy that. And uh, hey, a lot of fun. And I will see you on the other side. Okay. <laughs> Take care.